Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, first, I, I'd like to thank the organizers for this wonderful workshop. Uh, as I understand, As I understand, uh, the theme of this uh, workshop is supposed to be a combination of uh, condensed matter theory, uh, bootstrap, and also lattice simulations. So uh, it has been very successful, and uh, I would like to add a, a new piece of uh, information to this theorem, uh, to this theme, uh, by discussing one uh, work. I was lucky enough to participate as a, as a field theorist uh, on quantum loop models, uh, uh, some quantum Monte Carlo simulation of loop models. Uh, so you can see it's, uh, it's on archive on this paper, uh, on this archive number, and uh, it's a big collaboration. Uh, we use many methods like uh, quantum Monte Carlo simulation, uh, condensed matter theory, bootstrap arguments, and uh, exact diagonalization. So that's why there are so many authors. I would uh, like to thank them for, for their hard work. Uh, so to, to, connect, to bridge the gap from uh, the knowledge that we are usually more familiar with and the lattice knowledge, uh, I would also uh, discuss a little bit about, uh, uh, about structure field transition, which uh, uh, some basic concepts like Brian zone, like uh, representation theory of space group, uh, this is a small review I wrote uh, recently, uh, will appear soon. And uh, so if you, uh, uh, the main topic in this scheme is really the cubic CFT, uh, meaning that the O3 vector, vector model perturbed by a cubic anisotropy. Uh, so if you are lost at the first part, uh, please uh, come be awake and uh, later will come the few theory part would, uh, would kick in. So, uh, okay, so uh, instead of start with uh, quantum dimer models, let's uh, uh, start our discussion with some uh, simpler models called the structure field transition. So structure field transition is uh, a type of transition that uh, we, you bring a piece of crystal and you heat it up at some temperature uh, the crystal structure of this material would change uh, from, from a specific uh, structure to a different one. So this uh, transition usually can be understood as a spontaneous symmetry breaking. So uh, a crystal can be understood as a straight dimensional lattice. And uh, there are some uh, rotations, reflections, or translations that preserve such a lattice structure. Uh, this is the subgroup of the three-dimensional Euclidean group, and uh, uh, we usually call it space groups. And uh, so this uh, structure transition is really a spontaneous breaking of uh, space groups. So from higher symmetry to its subgroup, which are both space groups. So uh, in uh, these uh, space groups are infinite dimensional because uh, it contains an infinite dimensional translational part, right? So uh, on the other hand, when we do field theory, uh, what we are really more familiar with are some uh, just Euclidean three times some fluor symmetries, right? For example, uh, some structure field transitions are believed to be in the easing universality class, and the easing CFT we play with all the time is uh, contains a Z2 symmetry. And where is that Z2 symmetry coming from? So there are some steps. I hope I will be able to explain uh, to you. So uh, let's uh, first uh, define a lattice. So my lattice is defined as some unit vector, which I call it AI, some, some small vector. And my lattice would be some repeating uh, of this, this lattice size. So it's uh, a summation of NI. Uh, NI are integers from minus infinity to infinity, and uh, it gives you a lattice structure. So one can similarly define something called the reciprocal lattice vector, which are basically the, the, the lattice in the momentum space, okay? So uh, a, a crucial property is that the AI and BI, they satisfy some uh, orthogonal relations. Basically uh, their dot product is either zero or one. So uh, BI is some momentum, momentum space lattice unit vector and AI are some in our real space let us see what. Okay. So um, 
there's an important theorem called block theorem, which basically tells us a, an eigenfunction of the translational group. It has such a simple form. I'm sorry, this is completely trivial for our kind of matter friends, if, <laughs> but uh, bear with me. Uh, so the translational group, its eigenfunction are defined in this way. So it's given by a fifth factor, which is uh, uh, identified by some momentum, which is exponential i k. k is the momentum uh, of your, of we are playing with. And this ur function is some periodic functions uh, with per period that is uh, with respect to our unit vector. Okay. So uh, this is just representation theory. Uh, can, you, can you increase the character, the font? Increase the, the font. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Okay. Is this better? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. So uh, one important thing is that uh, moment of K and moment of K plus BI, BI are the moment of unit vectors we defined earlier. They are in the same representation of the space group. Why? Because I told you when I do the shift, the, the translational shift, I make I go, R go to R plus AI. Then uh, I change my momentum to be from K to K plus BI. Then there's a dot term coming from the exponential I, A, I, B, I. There's a dot term, which is either two pi or zero. So it's one. So it doesn't change anything. It doesn't bring, it's just one. So, so this simply tells us that uh, the brain zone, which is the first is uh, the momentum space square, which is defined by these bi's, are is a torus. So, k plus k plus b are identified. Okay. So, uh, the block zero. Uh, so let's consider a hypothetical goal uh, structure transition. So, at, let's see at high temperature, I have two types of atoms. They are completely randomly distributed. Okay. And uh, if I cool down my system and I would uh, be in a different phase, which uh, my atoms form some patterns, okay, some alternative patterns, right? Red, blue, red, blue, red, blue. So uh, this is, I call it hypothetical, but it's actually not uh, hypothetical. It appears in real systems, but uh, let's not dig in, uh, talk about the details. Uh, so at high temperature, the density of the red atoms are is basically a data function located on the lattice sites. Okay, the data function R are labeling all the lattice sites. At low temperature, on the other hand, the density of the red atoms are given by two terms. One term is our usual sum of uh, data functions, as as always. The second term is uh, has a has a phase factor, has a has a plane wave factor exponential i b one plus b two dot r and uh, this function if you if you just uh, expand it my b one and b two are basically uh, two pi zero and zero two pi in the moment of space okay and uh, one half b one b two are just exponential i pi x so 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 what I'm saying here is that it looks uh, mysterious but uh, but that factor exponential i B one plus B two a half R is basically exponential I pi X plus I pi Y. So when my X and Y are just integers, uh, these are alternating plus and minuses. So that's why we are we are showing this uh, this structure. Okay. So this is a. Uh, the first one is extremely high temperature. The second one is the low temperature phase. So we can treat the, uh, the coefficient in front of the second term to be our order parameter of this phase transition. So in general, at arbitrary temperature, uh, this, this number changes from zero to one, okay? So uh, this is our order parameter. Let's put our order parameter here. And uh, interestingly, and importantly, this order parameter is sitting at the corner of the brain zone. So my, my momentum is one half B1 plus B2, B1 and B2 are this uh, unit, uh, are, the, are the edges of the brain zone, it's sitting at the corner. So now we can resolve the mystery why, uh, why uh, space groups uh, give us Z2, because many of the space group elements act trivially on our order parameter. 
For example, if I rotate by 90 degree, my momentum shifts from here to here, okay? But as I just told you, my brain zone is a torus. So these two momentum are identical. So in this way, the 90 degree rotation does not really do much. It doesn't do anything. It's, it's, it's mapped to identity with acting on this, this order parameter. So uh, on the other hand, under lattice trans translation, my, I, I change my eta to be eta plus uh, horizontal shift. Uh, if you calculate the change of phase factor, you would see that this is exponential i pi x, uh, i pi, so it's a minus sign. So therefore a unit translation gives you a Z2 operation on your order parameter. So, uh, so what I'm trying to see here is basically the scalar fields in Landau theory, in the Landau theory of the, uh, of the structure field transition, they form some uh, unfeasible representations of the space group, okay? Because some many elements like T square, like rotation, are represented just as identity. So they, they are not feasible representative. So this is the, actually a, a very cool group theoretical question in the classification of the representation series of the space group. And uh, so now we know the, 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 it's unfeasible represented, but the, the elements that is feasible represented are just Z2. It's just flipping the sign of phi. We can write, uh, follow Landau's story and write down the effective action for uh, for the lambda phi four and the, the free energy is proportional to the terms that that is preserved that preserves this two symmetry so uh, as Andy explained in, in his first lecture I guess so, uh, he, this there's a transition happening if a is positive we are in the disordered phase the the the, the minimum of phi is located at at zero and if a is negative we have a spontaneous breaking of z2 symmetry and uh, we are in the uh, in the ordered phase the the order of this phase transition depends on uh, which uh, uh, depends on the sign of lambda if lambda is positive it's second order if lambda is negative it's first order so uh, so in other words uh, uh, th this is the phenomenological model. The details of the true dynamics depends on the details of the lattice interactions. But uh, uh, the phenomenological model, basically, uh, we can list some uh, some necessary conditions for a special uh, specific transition to be second order. So uh, actually, another smart thing that Landau introduced is uh, you, you, you can have fluctuations. And uh, this uh, this uh, degree of freedom, this lattice scale fluctuations can be specially modulated. So what I'm plotting here is uh, some cosine chi x and times cosine delta chi x with uh, the fluctuation spatial modulation part to a much larger scale than the UV scale. So these uh, small fluctuations are what I explained is the, the UV details. But uh, in reality, the large scale fluctuations are, are what few theorists we, we, we care about. And uh, in other words, so you can, you, you want to add some terms uh, that take into account such fluctuations. So instead of such a uh, mean field approximation, you can promote it to be a, uh, an action. This is uh, this term, the, the role of this leading term is basically suppressing the, the spatial fluctuations, okay? So this is how to, we get from a lattice model to a, to a field theory model, okay? This is the, lambda, the, the euro easing we, we, we care about all the time. Uh, so, uh, so this tells us, it, it's actually a group theoretical question, uh, whether a, a structural transition can be second order or not. Uh, it's, it needs to satisfy certain necessary conditions for uh, to be second order to have a CFT because we like CFT. Uh, the, the, the high temperature phase and lower temperature phase has to be satisfy some group subgroup relations. The, 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 the higher symmetry group has to be a parent group of the, uh, the lower symmetry group. This is one necessary condition. Another necessary condition that Landau introduced was uh, that the effective action cannot contain cubic terms. There should to not be phi to the third terms here. This is Landau condition. There's another one, it's a, which is called Lipschitz condition. It's basically ruling out these kind of terms. 
with one derivative terms. These i and g and k's are some indices for your space group. So therefore, these terms can be allowed by your, uh, by your space, group uh, space group action. So therefore, uh, uh, one necessary condition is this guy cannot be, uh, be triggered. It will be protected and ruled out by, by symmetry. That's, uh, that's necessary for second order free transition. And uh, the fourth one is what is basically is stability and their RG. So if your RG, uh, if you find a fixed point and uh, your fixed point contain more than one uh, relevant operators, uh, you will not uh, see a critical transition. You would, you would hope to find it in a tree critical uh, CFT instead. So, uh, as I was mentioning, these uh, London and Lefkowitz conditions can be written as few theoretical conditions on the representations of the space group. Remarkably, in the 70s and 80s, people uh, were able to classify all the possible Landau effective actions coming from structural transition. This is a group theory work. It's a group theory uh, representation series on the space group, as I just mentioned. So the early heroes are Landau, Lifshitz, Louis Michel, Eduardo Brazin, and all these heroes. So uh, they finished this, and uh, uh, I'm a CFT person, so I, I looked at uh, their result, and I it's uh, mostly lost. <laughs> Nobody, <laughs> no, no, I don't mean lost, but most people don't think about it when we do research. Uh, but uh, if you really look into these literatures, there are just six uh, that can be realized as uh, uh, commensurate structure phase transitions. Uh, I, I will not explain what commensurate means, but uh, uh, these are the, the critical ones. Not the, I, I haven't ex included any three critical points. These are the critical ones. Uh, so I will include this, uh, this table in my review. But uh, this is, uh, I, 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 I'm not claiming any originality in this, uh, in this book, <laughs> in this uh, table. So uh, it's basically heavily based on the work, the beautiful book written by Stokes and Hatch. So uh, these are, I should remind you, these are predictive results in formalization expansion. So non-predictively, we don't really understand whether there could be other possibilities or not. Uh, but uh, once, uh, we, we see a lot of familiar f familiar CFTs here, right? The easing one, the XY model, and uh, the cubic model would be the ones that uh, I will uh, be mainly talking about today. So, uh, so we will discuss now the... Exactly. So, so perturbatively, it's actually, the story is a bit more complicated. Perturbatively, the Epsilon expansion, the stable one is XY coupled together. That, but uh, but the non perturbative we know now, thanks to bootstrap, the decoupled one uh, do not contain any uh, relevant perturbations. Therefore, the decoupled one are the stable one. So this is what I mean by saying that when we go from perturbative to non perturbative some weird things can happen. So they interchange their roles as uh, as stability. So, uh, but. Yeah, precisely. So, so, so there, uh, there is uh, other possibilities. Is that uh, okay? There could be some unknown fixed point, un unaccessible by spontaneous from expansion fixed points appearing. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And whether or not they are reasonable by the idea. Whether or not? Yeah. The XY square you like that can be used by the Yeah. You cannot reason though you can follow the around with the double and not a different. Yes, yes. Uh, I, okay, let me summarize what uh, Stefano is saying is that basically we, 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 we have access to the, to the fixed points, but uh, from bootstrap, thanks to bootstrap, but we don't really have access to the four numbered bit of RG structure. Uh, so there are some assumptions here, uh, uh, but I just want to show this table because it's a good table. I, 
So, so now I will uh, switch topic and start to discuss the, the angle three cubics in the model. Uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Hagenbarsch mentioned uh, in his talk, he's working on this. Uh, so there were also some early uh, bootstrap attempts that uh, tried to locate this theory using bootstrap. There were two papers uh, almost appear at the same time, one by Ying and I, by a, and another by Andy. Uh, these are some early attempts. I think it's fair to see that uh, the result is not uh, as good as O2 and O3. Do you? <laughs> Six precedents, maybe, I don't know. But, uh, but, uh, but uh, my point is that is, you, you heard Ning's talk in, on Monday, so now people can do crazy things. And it's, uh, it's something that was not unimaginable uh, at this time. So uh, maybe some new improvement can be done. Uh, but uh, so the model I will discuss today is basically the some model called so-called dimer models. So uh, it's a quantum Hamiltonian and with two terms. One term is this uh, diagonal term. So uh, first I should see the, the Hilbert space is defined on a triangular lattice and uh, uh, the heuristic is it's given by dimers that uh, are uh, that takes uh, that can occupy these uh, these bonds, and uh, a local constraint that one impose is called uh, uh, is that uh, each side are connected to two dimers. So uh, this is also the model that people call fully packed loop models. So you have some loops on your lattice. And each uh, uh, each side is has a one ingoing and outgoing direction. Therefore, it connected with two dimers. And uh, uh, these uh, uh, terms, basically, if you find a parallel pair of dimers, you can either assign it with energy, with a potential term V, or you assign it with a, with a, a connected term, which flips the, the sign of these both of the dimers. So. Uh, the previous common wisdom is that the face diagram of this guy uh, looks like this. Uh, when V over T is much bigger than some uh, critical value, which happens to be one, uh, there is a, a, a face, which is people call it the staggered face. Uh, you can easily see that in fact, this staggered uh, wave function is, uh, is an eigenstate of your Hamiltonian. Because uh, I mean, there's no parallel dimers on it, so it's basically both of the t term and v term they annihilate this, this Hamiltonian, so it's a zero energy state. Uh, but uh, as you change v over t, at some point a new phase kick in, which uh, our kind of matter friends call it z to spin liquid phase. Uh, I will not explain the beauty for <laughs> it's a topological CFT. Uh, TQFT and uh, it uh, it's a TQFT with Z to Gibbs. Okay. Uh, yeah, so Hamiltonian. Okay, my I just explained the Hilbert space is defined as loops on this uh, triangular lattice. And I require my, I restrict my Hilbert space to be the configurations that uh, are uh, fully packed, meaning that each side has to be occupied with two dimers. Okay. So uh, this Hamiltonian is that uh, if you, if you find, uh, if you don't find, uh, you, you search each of these uh, parallel bonds. And if you find no uh, parallel dimers, you do nothing. If you find a parallel dimers like here, for example, this one, this pair, you, I, you assign it with the energy V, this V term does that. On the other hand, you, you're acting on the Hamiltonian would flip the, uh, the, this pair of dimers to be configuration like this. Yeah, so that's uh, what the Hamiltonian does. So you have to use the energy and I get more and more and I get to so, like, Yeah, I'm using, sorry. Yes, I'm. Uh, I'm using. I'm using prerogative bounded conditions. So in the end, they are. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, sorry. Say it again. 
Yes. Exactly. Uh, yeah, you can. Uh, I, I think uh, my my friend <laughs> did, did 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 this. Uh, yeah, I think you you can do that. But uh, but but for this talk, I would just restrict it to to the two dimensional side. Yeah, thank you. This is uh, on a 2D lattice, but it's a quantum transition. Therefore, it's 2 plus 1D. So the CFT would be the 2 plus 1 dimensional cubic model, if we talk about that. So I told you the, the old wisdom is this is a fixed diagram. So the, the new result in our paper is saying that, OK, there is another fish here. There is a hidden fish here, which we call it y some plaquette fish. So from Z2 spin liquid, the old, the old argument was that it goes from Z2 quantum spin liquid to lattice pneumatic phase directly. By lattice pneumatic, I mean all the dimers are parallel. But the new hidden phase that we discovered in our paper was that, okay, there is a, a, a new phase which is called Weissam plaquette. So uh, how do we uh, see this? Uh, first, there's a, a simple transformation you can do. Uh, to 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 move uh, your uh, to 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 introduce something called Wisons. Basically, you start with a reference uh, site, and if you cross a dimer, you you change it from minus sign to plus sign. So in this way, a dimer configuration can be mapped into a a a, a Wison, so called Wison configurations on the on the uh, on the dual lattice. The dual lattice is the triangular lattice. Oh, no, no, oh, sorry, honeycomb lattice. So these are plus and minus signs, they are basically spins. Uh, so we can write a, a spin model, uh, the more familiar transverse field spin model. And uh, the belief is that they are in the same universality class. Uh, so there's no direct map from the dimer model to this uh, G1, G2, and G3. G1, G2, and G3 are nearest neighbor, next nearest neighbor, next to next nearest neighbor interactions on your, uh, on your, on your transverse field easy model. There's no uh, uh, first principle way of mapping from the, 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 the dimer Hamiltonian to this Hamiltonian. So let's just do some general thing. Let's just uh, try to uh, argue what the critical modes are, just like we did for the structure phase transition. So you just pick G1, G2, G3 to be one, some random number for, for, for some uh, large regions. In fact, uh, your band structure looks like this. Uh, when you turn gamma equal to zero, at that limit, uh, this is the a quadratic Hamiltonian. You can diagonalize it and look at what are the, the, the modes, the gap modes. It turns out uh, the modes are, uh, the minimum are located in some uh, uh, corners of the brain zone as we encountered in the structure transition. So now you can uh, ask how does uh, your space group acts on these, uh, these modes? And uh, you have three modes, and uh, these are the phi one, phi two, and phi three of the old three model we, we, we put in for, for the field theory that, uh, that we will write an effective action later. So you can ask how the translation acts on these modes, how the uh, reflection rotation acts on these modes. Uh, this is a conjecture because I, I'm solving my Hamiltonian directly at just a, a zero gamma limit. And uh, I'm just saying that potentially these, uh, these, uh, these endpoints are the Hamiltonians, are, are the critical modes. Uh, in principle, I'm not sure with it. But later, I will confirm this conjecture from the uh, numerical simulation. So as I said, we can understand how space groups act on these Wisons, on these uh, critical modes. So it turns out, uh, again, it's, uh, uh, it's an unfaithful representation of the space group. So it's, uh, it acts uh, like this. The translation acts as this element. Uh, the rotation acts as this element, and so on. OK, these are the two is uh, the. Uh, flipping all the signs of phi's, and uh, M is some reflection. Uh, so in the end, if you look at uh, uh, the group and uh, the allowed uh, perturbations in your effective action, it looks like this. 
So uh, the main difference from before is that there is a V4 term, which is a cubic and astrotropic term uh, uh, that breaks all three symmetry to the cubic symmetry. Okay. So this is, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, so let's uh, understand a bit about the mean field structure. Go ahead. Uh, uh, Exactly. So this is the Hamiltonian on the 2D sphere. So uh, we assume the emergence of the Lorentzian symmetry uh, because it's at this is, these are zero temperature simulations. So at zero temperature, yeah. Uh, yes, I'm including it. I shouldn't have. <laughs> they are irrelevant at the critical point. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, in fact, uh, these are uh, this symmetry is a bit lower than than the cubic symmetry, but uh, at uh, the fixed points they are irrelevant terms. So the real CFT is uh, the CFT is still the cubic CFT. Yeah. Okay. They are they are allowed by uh, by by lattice symmetry. So so my effective fraction would be this, would be a subgroup of cubic, but on the second order field transition there's an emergent cubic symmetry. So, so let's look at the, 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 the mean field structure of the cubic model. We just solve that potential at different uh, values of couplings. So if the cubic isotropic term is positive, we will be in this phase, which is people usually call it corner cubic phase. So the vacuum is located at the corners of the, this three-dimensional cube. When uh, V4 is negative, you are in another phase, which is called fused cubic phase. And your vacuums are located at uh, the surface centers of your, your cube. So it's denoted here, basically, phi 1, phi 2, and phi 3 have plus or minus, there are eight different vacuums in, in your system. And if you have a, a fused cubic, you will have six vacuums instead. Why is it not going to the next page? Sorry. Uh, we didn't. Uh, because I mean, the lattice result tells us it's a, it's a critical mode, uh, model, not a triple So we didn't check that. Uh, yes, but it will be a triple one because we, you would have the land five fours to be also relevant. So in that case, you would be triple. So uh, there was a, a famous work by uh, a, a Heroni. Among a Heroni, he, he did the RD analysis of this type of cubic. Uh, fixed points, there are two picture. When uh, the number of components is bigger than some critical NC, and uh, the, 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 the cubic fixed point are a stable one. On the other hand, when this number of components are smaller than some NC, the stable one are the ON symmetric one. This, uh, I think as Bruce Weber, people are probably more familiar with this stuff. So one uh, important part that uh, by uh, the Bruce Rappers, uh, I won't uh, see the names, it's listed here. Uh, importantly, they rolled out uh, uh, this picture for the n equals three cubic model. So uh, what people did was to uh, do the O3 bootstrap and test directly what is uh, the rank four stress energy, uh, symmetric traceless tensor of the O3 model. And they showed that this guy is relevant. So the cubic and isotropy term is relevant near the Owen model. So that corresponds to this direction. So that guy is relevant. So you cannot see this picture. Instead, you are in this picture. So this is a bootstrap number bit proof of the result of the stability of, of the uh, uh, showing that this is the actual scenario. Uh, interestingly, uh, for uh, the V4. Is, uh, is bigger than zero and it's a small number because the RD flow is really, really short. So it's a, it's a positive small number. And uh, so 
these are the histograms of the y sons that we measured on our lattice. So these are projected onto the phi one, phi two plane and phi two pi, uh, sorry, I, there's a mistake here. This really does phi one, phi two plane is projected on the, on the plane. So you can see this is when we over T is much less than uh, from the critical value, you will see that it's in the fifth cubic phase, which is the phase that V4 is negative. And uh, as you change, as you increase V, uh, the bright point of the histogram, instead of showing at the fifth uh, uh, cubic point, it shows as the corner cubic point instead. So this is the V4 bigger than zero phase of the cubic model. And at, after you continue to increase it, there is a, a critical transition. And after that, you are in the disordered phase, which your mass is a, a phi, phi square term is bigger than zero. You are in the so-called disordered phase. So uh, what is happening here? So uh, we saw both the fist cubic phase and the corner cubic phase. Uh, I would say it's important that the Boutsov result and RG result tells us that this V4 is a small positive number, okay? So what's happening as we tune this V over T is that the lattice operator, as you change V over T, it doesn't just cause this uh, mass term to change sign. It also has a small mixing between the mass term and uh, this cubic isotropic term. So as you further change it, this guy also changed sign and you are in a new phase, okay? So this is uh, beautifully consistent with the, with the, the bootstrap story. So uh, again, near the critical point, you can uh, plot the Y's on all the parameters. Uh, these are exactly the things that Intel was doing yesterday. So uh, you, you scale your order parameter with respect to the critical exponents, beta and mu here, are the scaling corresponding to the scaling dimension of your CFT. And you will see the data collapse, they become a single line. These are common tricks in Monte Carlo simulations. People use this to determine the critical points and, uh, and to show that it's indeed a second order phase transition. So uh, we are using the O3 critical exponents measured by bootstrap to, to rescale this data. As you can see, even though we know the actual CFT should be cubic, uh, it's perfectly okay to rescale it with O3 because O3 and the cubic are very similar. Their, their critical exponents are, are the same. I, 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 to high precision, they are the same. So uh, I, uh, so, 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 uh, to make the mock explicit, we measured another quantity, which is some lattice local operator, uh, which are the T terms. So uh, we, we define it on this kind of triangle and uh, uh, we, def we measure the local T terms on this uh, shape. Uh, but we, to make it rotational symmetric, we, we, we define it on, on this bigger triangle instead. Uh, this is a, a specific vacuum that we found and the, the, the takeaway message is that this guy is invariant. The symmetry is broken, but it preserves a, a, an elastic rotation symmetry here. So now we can ask, what is this order, this order parameter? The order parameter is basically uh, a combination of the phi's of, of bosom bilinears, and uh, it's invariant under this R6 rotation. Therefore, the condensation of this operator does not cause the breaking of R6. That's how we came up with this guy, with this auto parameter. And you can measure it uh, on different ways. You can see on the on the so-called on the fifth cubic phase, it's almost zero. Because remember, on the fifth cubic phase, only one of the phi's gets expectation value. But these are like bilinears, so they should be almost zero. On the corner cubic phase, on the other hand, uh, both of these are would get an expectation value. Therefore, you have a non-zero one. And then again, if you enter into the disordered phase, it, it's again zero because none of these fields has an expectation one. This is again, perfectly consistent with uh, the predictions from the, the field theory. So uh, I think I will skip this part. Uh, oh, okay, so uh, the reason that we are, no, let me not skip it. The reason I mean, uh, we are interested in this is because uh, the dimer models are proposed to be connected with some experiments called Rydberg atoms. 
So uh, it's uh, some man-made lattices. So you have, uh, 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 you can use lasers to pin your atoms at some, some areas and you can arrange whatever kind of lattices you like uh, in the lab system. And uh, you can, uh, so, so the Rydberg atoms uh, correspond to uh, some two dimensional wiring also called the uh, Fadley, sorry, Singupta and Sesta models. So these are uh, uh, some hard core boson models defined on, 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 uh, on this uh, Kagumi lattice. And uh, the, the thing is that uh, you have an atom which uh, is in the highly excited state, which has a large uh, principal uh, quantum number. And then your radius would be very, very big. Okay, if this atom is excited, it becomes a huge radius atom and it will interact with a nearby atom. So in this case, you are, you are uh, showing whether a boson, a hard core boson is there or not. And they are interacting with, uh, with some R to the six uh, interact Coulomb interactions. But in the meantime, you have some kind of chemical potential terms that uh, tells you how much of these uh, Rydberg atoms you will, be excited, you will excite. So uh, as I said, you can arrange uh, any of the, uh, the lattices you like. Uh, you can, for example, arrange it to be on a Kagumi lattice. And uh, if you uh, tune this chemical potential properly, uh, it, it is believed that at some region of the parameter space, uh, your, 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 your bosons would form this kind of lattice structures with uh, satisfying which you can map into dimer models. For example, the, the real to map it is basically you have a Kagomi lattice and you draw a line here uh, to, uh, if, to, to map it into a dimers. So a, a, a Rydberg item on Kagomi lattice can be mapped uh, in, uh, uh, at low energy, I believe to be mapped into a dimer configuration. So uh, the hope is uh, that the dimer models we simulated on the lattice uh, would be mapped into, into some real experiment measurements uh, in the future. So um, this is a, uh, okay, so the, the same model, the, 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 this uh, uh, Rydberg atom model can be simulated using DMRG study. So uh, our claim is that maybe there is a line here corresponding to the diamond models. Uh, so I will skip the details, but the, these are really cool experiments <laughs> that you just see in this room. So um, I didn't mention one thing is that uh, uh, instead of the actual O3 model, we are, uh, instead of the actual Lambda 5 4 theory, we are actually dealing with a Lambda 5 4 theory coupled to a Z2 gauge theory. So the we are gauging a Z2 gate, a Z2 symmetry, which is discrete, so therefore it doesn't change the dynamics. But uh, uh, the result is that uh, uh, in your dimer measurement in, the, in real life, uh, you, you, the, those gauge on environment objects would not show up uh, in your measurements. So instead of uh, seeing that the order parameter of your phase transition is given by phi's, right? You should really have two phi's the boson bilinears as your order parameter. So uh, this in the O3 story would be the uh, symmetric traceless tensor, rank two symmetric traceless tensor representation of the O3 model that people has beautifully measured. So uh, recently with Ning, we did uh, some, uh, some conform perturbation work uh, because uh, we, 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 as I explained, as a true order parameter, in experiment, in dimer experiment, are, are, are boson bilinears instead of a single boson. So uh, we should uh, try to know its, its scaling dimension, even though probably it's questionable whether uh, in real experiments you can uh, approach such a precision. Uh, but uh, anyway, we did this. Uh, so the theory is basically you, instead of the cubic action you understand it as uh, starting from the cubic uh, O3 and you perturb it by the rank four symmetric traceless tensor. So uh, there was a paper by Zohar and uh, David 
uh, doing conformal perturbation for, for the Eason model, random bound Eason model. And there was another one by these gentlemen who did the conformal perturbation for the long range Eason model. But basically, uh, the leading order to leading order, the conformal perturbation depends on two OPEs, which is basically uh, the, 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 the operator you want, wish to calculate uh, OO and uh, with respect to the perturb perturbation that you uh, you perturb your CFT by, uh, divided by the T4, T4, T4 OPE. And uh, a, a thing that can be easily understood from simple group theory is that uh, the phi field, scalar field itself, and your singulet phi square would not receive corrections at leading order in delta epsilon simply because uh, in group theory, phi in O3, phi times phi does not contain T4. So this, uh, this OPE is simply zero because of group theory at leading order. So uh, in other way, the Euro uh, critical exponents, the eta and the mu, uh, these receive corrections starting from the epsilon square order, which is uh, supposed to be much smaller. And, uh, but, uh, but the T2, uh, the boson bilinears receives corrections at leading order in delta. So, uh, so we were just basically curious about uh, what this number is uh, because there are some group theoretical factors that you need to take into account. Maybe some miracle happens that it will enlarge this, this difference. And uh, so we did the calculation and you can see it's still fairly small. The, the delta T of O3 is given by 1.21 and uh, the T representation the branch and the cubic group into two representations. So these two of them would uh, receive uh, different uh, corrections in their, in their anonymous dimension. And uh, this is uh, the auto parameter I showed you a little bit earlier. So uh, we, call, we call this new uh, critical exponent data star because of the traditions that when you deal with uh, uh, ON model, uh, Lambda 54 model coupled with Z to Gitter theory, people put a star there because it's the, 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 the parity symmetry is gauged. So uh, there is a small difference, but hopefully, I heard uh, <laughs> Professor Hagenbarsh is working on cubic uh, simulations on Monte Carlo, using Monte Carlo now. Maybe this is visible in his upcoming work. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so uh, that's uh, pretty much all I want to discuss. Uh, so some future directions is that there is already a published work, uh, well, uh, on archive uh, on the square lattice, it's fully packed loop models on square lattice. Uh, this model interesting has some connection with the integrability models. Uh, the safety the is, well, it's not a safety, it's a lift point into plus one D with the dynamical critical exponents is equal to two, uh, but it has some very interesting connections with, with six vertex models, which are 2D integrable. Uh, so uh, we did this, but there's uh, as another direction is that uh, potentially there might be new faces near the one dime per site model. Uh, that in that case, uh, there's again, a huge uh, enhancement of symmetries from some discrete group, some finite group, to O4. So uh, in fact, there are some chance there's a new phase from field theory analysis. You can, you can, you can, you can argue that the, it exists. So it would be really interesting to see it from the, uh, from the Monte Carlo simulations uh, to see some signatures of them. Uh, at the beginning, I told you the classification of the representation series of space groups, but maybe you can do magnet, magnetic transitions Maybe you can also classify all possible incommensurate transitions. And uh, I kind of cheated a bit seeing that uh, the, uh, it's a, my, my phi forms a representation of the space group, on phase four representation of the space group, but it's actually a projective representation of the space group because as your, your wisons move on the lattice, it experiences some very phase and there's an extra U1 part you need taking into account. So maybe by analyzing the group theory of wallpaper groups, which are 2D space groups, you can indeed list all the possible stable CFTs that can come from the, uh, this kind of uh, projective representations. That will be some very interesting work for the future. So uh, that's all I want to see and thank you.
Thanks. Yes, question. I think this is more of a comment than the question, but if you take asylum expansion results mm -hmm. to several loops, maybe six, and do resummation techniques, you can show that the cubic you know, the when it becomes relevant, the cubic term has a critical value of n which is less than three. Ah, yes. Uh, uh, which I, obviously I, I ties it, it ties in with the bootstrap results. But I, I mean, I think the predicted value of the critical n is very comparable with the bootstrap results. I see, I see. Yeah, I think the, you cited this in your papers, right? I, you probably, yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, the cubic model is a, is a, is a, it's a cool model that has been started by Epsilon expansion, Monte Carlo, and now Bootstrap. It's, it's really a corner that uh, people can combine efforts to, to attack it. Yeah. But if NC is 2.9 something now, which we heard uh, in the beginning of the week, then there is, I mean, then the two fixed points are sitting together and there is no way any experiment will be able to distinguish them. No? Uh, indeed, uh, but uh, I was hope that uh, that using the method uh, that uh, Professor Hagenbosch proposed, uh, maybe you can see at least uh, the corrections, the leading order corrections because of this uh, uh, from the conform prohibition. So this is a, uh, I don't know, this is uh, this difference is um, is zero point zero one. So I don't know whether there's some chance or not. <laughs> Uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> unfortunately i didn't measure that operator but maybe uh, i can uh, do that in the future yeah this is this is uh, slightly bigger than than the others so could be possible i, I don't know in real life i agree it's uh, it's very very hard right because the other don't get the first order correction right exactly, so second order. exactly. any other Question? No? Well, let's thank Jun Chen again.